Hey guys, welcome back to Tell Me Why. We are going to be starting chapter two today. I'm pretty excited to get back into it. Last time that we left off, we had a huge spin when it came to the twins' mom and her perspective on her son being transgender and a lot of different like life aspects, what mental state their mom might have actually been in. Maybe she wasn't trying to hurt her children. Maybe there was something else deeper going on. We also learned the truth that it was Allison who ended up killing their mom in the end, defending her brother. So definitely a huge spin on things, it, pretty eye-opening to why she acts the way she does because we haven't really understood her almost resistance to learn more, you know? But yeah, let's just get back into it, guys. Once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest, there lived a pair of crafty goblins. Crafty goblins did everything together, until one day, when darkness overwhelmed the big wooden house in which they lived. I thought those goblins Blamed were legitimately darkness. Yoda. Brother Goblin was forced to leave the forest, Maybe Yoda. while his sister had to stay behind. Aww. That's when he went off to, um... It was almost like later, Juvie, They were in finally reunited. And together, they decided to confront the darkness in the big wooden house. Though they sought the help of their friends in the forest, they found that no one wanted to delve into the long-gone past. Hmm. This is how the goblins found themselves alone in the woods, trying to discover why darkness had submerged the big wooden house. You remember that creepy thing in the woods? The last episode we played? That legitimately gave me chills. <laughs> Poor Allison. Tomorrow we should play Compass and North Star in the woods. Be sure to wear your hat then. You be sure to wear your hat. <laughs> huh. All right, who wants ice cream? Me! That is a shit ton of ice cream. Yep. Oh my god, like trying to give them a sugar rush. Without a word, she went out and buried the tiara in the ground beneath the sapling. And as the final scoop of dirt fell, the tiara felt truly gone. And with it, the final link to her old self. She could only go forward and find a new place for herself in this world, where she was no longer truly a princess in a tiara and a beautiful gown, but a wan woman alone in a deep and ancient wood. And that was how the princess lost her most precious treasure. And her title. I don't like that story. <laughs> there were no goblins, and it was depressing. We won't read it again. I love you, Mom. Not me. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, love I was about to say, mm -hmm. God damn. I, so I don't know too. if you should say that to your mom. Sleep well and dream, my doves. Hmm. I mean, if they can even sleep after fucking two pints of ice cream. Ollie? Oh, this was the night. Ollie? This. Is that why she gave them ice cream? That's a very, like a ton of it as a treat in a way. This is strange. You don't need more ice cream. What a waste. Oh my gosh, she was looking for more ice cream. Don't do that. Oh, that's disgusting. It's probably all warm. Allison! Ollie! Allison, help! Ugh. This 
This is getting really dark. Imagine the trauma that this child had to experience. We need to call for help. I killed mom. I killed her. Chapter two Family Secrets. Well, that's the way to start it. Holy crap. I don't know. I feel bad for Allison. I can't imagine how she has had to cope with doing that, you know? Oh, demonetized. It's cute to see them. Oh, I really loved that. The transition. how to throw a brick of a pillow. <laughs> Tyler probably has a concussion now. Who is that person on the left? In the bathing suit. I love his boots. <coughs> oh, man, sorry. Hey. You doing all right? Sounds like they have a fire going. I thought coming here would be closing a chapter of our lives, you know? <coughs> Ooh, got an itch in my throat. Spun off a whole miserable prequel trilogy. This game is really beautiful. Okay. No. We're not letting ourselves do this again. Come on. Up. Mind numbing labor's a great way to forget your troubles. Uh, can't we just have coffee instead? No. On your feet, soldier. Let's. Take a break from packing and sort out the furniture. Mm. If we get enough <laughs> done, I'll drive you into town and buy you a gallon of ice cream. A gallon? What is with all this ice I mean, cream? Chip. 
two gallons. Oh my Let's god, two gallons. They're gonna eat two gallons of ice cream. I predict vomiting in the future. You put trash on the on the mom's room? Goblin face is keep. Dollar sign is donate or sell and trash can as well. Trash. By the way, I cleared out most of the stuff from the bathroom this morning, but I left you the toilet. How very generous of you. Oh, I love her hair. Like this. It feels much lighter in this home now. Keep trash sell. It's a table? Let's sell it. Maybe someone would be willing to refinish it. What's that down there? Look under. Oh. Goblins What's were this here. Doing down here. Is Aww. that gum? Ugh. <laughs> I guess that was probably me. That's pretty cute. But I don't think we need to keep a table. We can probably give that away. Um what else? I guess it's finally time to take these pictures down. Yeah, still deciding what to do with them. I think they're happy memories and we should keep them. I mean, most of them are pretty happy memories. I guess. There'd be some regrets. You look cute here. That's not me. I mean, it is, but... Um, I get it. I understand. But not really. I get it. It's just weird seeing myself like that again. Damn. Didn't think a picture could throw me like this anymore. Did therapy help? I'm sorry about that. Um, well, I, I kind of feel both ways, but let's ask. I'm curious. Has therapy helped at all? Oh, yeah, definitely. My therapist really heard me when I said I was a guy, and she helped me get ready for the reactions I'd get, you know? It's dealing with other people that's been way harder than figuring myself out. That makes sense. At the end of the day, being able to look in the mirror and see Tyler, that's made the biggest difference. Hmm. Which is why I'm scheduling my top surgery as soon as we sell this house. No more putting a binder on every morning. God, that sounds fucking amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Just so you know, I'll be there to help out when you do. Whatever you need. I can imagine. Thanks. Just how right. like constrictive and Ronan? horrible that would you feel. You know what? I'll keep a few. And the relief of to being remind able us how to far get we've come. rid of that. All right. Um. Oh, there's nothing else. Oh, shit. Oh, what's this one? Who's that? Oh man, I love this one. Who is that? <laughs> Why do I look so pissed? I remember loving this. Maybe because Marianne was sticking a camera in your face. There's a, there's a man there. Like, I don't know who that is. Oh, well, guess we're never gonna know. Oh, there's a memory. Uh, how do I do this again? Oh, shoot. Where is it? There it is. Come on, honey, smile, like Allison. Oh. Hold up your fish. Oh, it's, it's not my Eddie. Fish anymore. Allison stole it. Oh, it's Eddie? Wait a minute. Eddie was around. Sister, the fish thief. <laughs> In the you were past? Just being like, bratty. Was I, though? Yes. All I did was help clean it when we were out on the porch. Eddie had to force you to share. Why do I get bad feelings about Eddie now? It's like, at first I was kind of like, okay, you know, he just wanted to help and stuff, but like, I didn't know Allison, that he knew the family I asked you before, to clean up the coffee table like, three really times well. already. <sighs> Oops, Can, I forgot. Tyler, don't interrupt. I'm having to train a thought, okay? Ugh, what is gross this? stain is gross. Uh, what happened? Some unfortunate spillage that brought about the end of indoor tea parties. I hid the stain with my toys, forgetting oh. that they would eventually be picked up. Brilliant move, Ronan. Um, you were no better. Well, I seem to recall a time you stole an egg, put it on the couch, and sat on it because you wanted a pet chicken. Wow. We don't talk about that. Uh-huh. 
Well, at least I didn't leave a stain. That's hilarious. I wonder if the egg broke, though. Oh, there's another... There's another one. Where is it at? Oh, right here. Hey, now. Take your time. He's not gonna jump up and do the cha-cha. What about me? I wanna clean the fish, too. It's not even your fish. You didn't catch anything. Ugh. Only because you wouldn't stop talking and scared all the fish away. Keep your eyes on what you're doing. Hmm. Allison, when we're done with this half, you can take over and do the other one. That sound fair? Yes. Mm -mm. Interesting. Right. I was kind of being a brat. Uh, yeah, because they share those memories, like when I, when I remember them. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Eddie right now. It's just weird that he was kind of a part of the family before. Like, I didn't know that. All right. I'll clean it up. Thanks. While you do that, I'll check out the furniture. I'm guessing you want to keep the coffee table? Um, I... Uh, what about you? If there's anything you want, speak now. I'm not really planning on bringing furniture to Denali. And if I need a base in Juno, you'll have all the furniture I need. How very non-committal of you. Okay. All right, I'll keep it. Okay, cool. I was gonna keep it. <clears throat> oh, God. What's that? I really like that armchair. For your forest shack, you like the mold smell. Yeah, let's say for It'll your forest shack. It'll look sharp next to your tree stump nightstand. Wait, armchair? I'll be the most stylish mountain man ever. Which armchair? But I was actually thinking it should go in your library. Library? We may not even have a living room. <laughs> I have faith in you. Um, keep? Sure, Maybe keep it. Maybe it'll be salvageable with a deep clean? I mean, if he likes it, keep it. Hold on, this. <laughs> and finally. I hate to say it, but... God, Luca freaked me out. can't just get a one-way ticket to the dump. Uh, no protest here. I think I have well, permanent I have knee damage from a decade of bumping into the corner of those damn things. It's like the second Whoa, I turned that thing flipping. over, he started barking. You were relieved from your duties. Luca, it's okay. Hold on. Yeah, I'm gonna have to pause. Are you gonna keep doing that? Maybe? Maybe I'm going... Yeah. Yes, you are. <laughs> Having fun, are we? Can I do it again? This is getting utterly ridiculous. Oh my god, yes. Just keep going. Just keep going, Allison. Maybe that was the last time. <laughs> you don't like it, Tyler? Like he's like, what the hell? One more time. All right, I guess that is pretty funny. <laughs> oh my God, yes, I got an achievement. A mood changer. All right, I'm glad I can make him laugh. All right, let's get, we need to get up. We've cleaned, oh, no we haven't. We didn't clean the table at all. Now we've cleaned the table. We can leave. Ooh, I can turn this thing into a terrarium. Hey, huh? remember Volcano? Oh. Um, Volcano? What do you mean? Oh shit, what do you mean Volcano? Finish your salad first. Thank you, Tessa. You're a lifesaver. Oh, Tessa's oh, here. Don't worry about it. They're just leftovers from Tessa. the restaurant. What about Volcano? She needs to eat her lunch, too. Oh, you're quite right, love. Oh, there was... Do they have a lizard? Here you go, little one. You must be hungry, too. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> Looks like Tessa didn't have that broom up her ass back then. That's right. You you tell her, Allison. You tell her. What's up here? That's a nice face. I wonder if my horse figurine is still in there. What? You're what now? You're what now? You know, my blue toy horse. 
with the kind of melted face? G the one you stole from me. What? That never happened. Yeah, it did. Well, I won it at take that the face down. Halloween carnival they had at the school every year. You grabbed it and hid it in the pot. Then when I tried to get it back, you said there was a snake inside too. Wow. Uh. Uh. Whatever you say. Whatever you say, horse face. We have the same face. That is actually very true. Nice comeback, Tyler. Um, okay. Oh, he's keeping this armchair? This thing is a piece of absolute poop, Tyler. Why you want that? Of all of them, I think that this couch is coolest. Or love seat, I guess it would be. Alright, what else is there? What's this? We don't mm. need this. Crummy table and wobbly chairs. No, this needs to go. This is this is trash. We ate way too much expired food on this table. Look at that. The table is. Oh. Oh god. What? That's, what's that smell? What do you mean? What's that smell? <gasps> oh. What's that smell? Smells like delicious garbage. Ooh, Who's that? Yes, delicious indeed. <laughs> or could it be Stinky Pants Sam? <laughs> oh, Stinky Pants Sam! <laughs> Come on now. Wow. Sam got that smell getting a skunk out of our barn. Be nice. <gasps> a skunk? What did you do to her? Is she okay? <laughs> sure is. She just went hunting for food and couldn't get back out. All she needed was a little nudge to get her on the way. It's okay, Luca. Sam Kansky, hero of skunk kind. I remember being super impressed by him, and it made me want to be a wild animal superhero too. Well, that's pretty cool. I don't know if making a song about him being stanky is like a good. Um, you hungry? Good thing to do, we but. have a whole lot of nothing. Is that an uh, empty ketchup bottle? I was hoping maybe you could make me one of those. Pickle and ketchup sandwiches? What? No pickles, ketchup maybe. I'm sorry, sir. We are all out of pickles today. Could I interest you in a ketchup only sandwich? <laughs> Looks like there's still a bottle back here. Oh, ew. Says the guy who used to eat peanut butter with ranch. Oh my god. Mm, so good. Hey, oh my Allison, god. Come take a break with me. No! I have shit to do, Tyler. God damn it, this house won't fucking. Sell on its own. No, okay, when I was a kid, I did used to eat ketchup on bread. For no reason, like nothing else. Just ketchup and bread. It was the weirdest shit ever. Ancient I'll admit, appliances. Now I don't even like here. ketchup. I Hello. like mustard. That oven looks in okay enough shape. No way. We are not moving the oven. Oh, he wants hey, me to take a break. All right. Free. You want coffee? Yes, 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 yes. Not even a question. Starting the fire again? Yeah, Coffee. I'm gonna boil some water. You want something to drink? Yes. Coffee. Would you rather have instant coffee or instant coffee? Hmm, nah, sorry. I'm more of a tea, tea person. Mm. Get it, tea, as in. Mm -hmm. Tyler. How long have you been waiting to make that joke? Longer than oh. I'm willing to admit. Oh my goodness. <sighs> I am so glad Eddie came through on the caffeine. Shh. What the hell is- hear that? <gasps> the Ice King is sending us a warning. No, for real, what the hell is that? Where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it? I love how they're like, this is normal. Said the Ice King. You shall be banished from the forest. And if you dare come back before the new moon, you shall feel my anger in your gut. Hear it in the wind. Whoosh! <laughs> huh. Do you think the Ice King would really react that way? He may be intimidating, but he's always fair and never mean. Oh, yeah. Y you're right. Maybe he tells the goblins to help the people they hurt instead? Great idea, sweetie. Why don't we think about it at dinner? I'll put everything away for safekeeping while you go wash your hands. Hmm. Can you put them in the binder so they don't get stained? Of course, love. 
I'm definitely going right here, and I'm gonna open this. I still think my dark and twisty oh, version is better. We put so many hours into that book. Yeah. Our binder was full of extra drawings and incomplete stories. Where's it at? Think they're all still in the kitchen drawer? We should go take a look. I mean, I'm already there. I'm already there. Can I? Oh, you're gonna do it, Tyler. Let me see, let me see. Let me see. Hey, Allison. Allison's yes. first drafts. <laughs> right. Because I didn't contribute at all. Come on. I know you did. Huh. I can't believe she kept all these. Why wouldn't think she? think putting them on the fridge for a couple of weeks would have been enough. You know how we thought of ourselves as the goblins? Did you ever get the sense that maybe Marianne was the princess in the stories? Uh, yeah. She called her bedroom the princess's sanctum. And uh, she was all alone in the woods, in this house, until huh. we showed up. She was. Alone. But with a few who friends who helped was her their the dad? Way. What are you doing? Research. So, if Marianne was the princess... Then who were all the rest? And here we go. No. Oh, come on. Humor me. This makes sense. Um, Book of Goblins. Let's go ahead and see. Who are the rest? Oh, God. The frog earns the right to speak. Uh, the frog earns the right to speak. Once upon a time in an ancient... We're probably not going to be able to read all of these but um, it might give insight even briefly to who they may be because it could be, you know, like Sam or it could be Eddie or it could be uh, Tessa or whatever. Once upon a time in an ancient and deep forest, there lived a big frog in a small pond. She was a peaceful creature who spent most of her time eating, swimming, and sleeping. From the morning to the evening, she did everything the smaller frogs did, except she did it bigger. She ate more, she jumped farther, she was smarter, and she made much more noise. Everybody in the forest could hear her loud cra or croaking, and everybody was happy that they could. You see, it was easy to get lost in the forest, but thanks to the frog's loud noises, you could just as easily find your way back to her pond. Maybe it would not have been the same if the big frog had kept singing during the night, but she was much too lazy an animal to stay active after dark. One day, an unknown visitor came to the forest for the first time. It was a young woman dressed in a beautiful gown. She was walking fast through the woods as if she was running away, and she never looked back. Many eyes spied the princess pass by, but no one dared to help her, for the mad hunter was on her trail. This is not our business, they said, and we had better look away. For the mad hunter was an unyielding man who loved nothing but hunting down prey for money and glory. Nothing could escape this or his piercing eye for long. Oh my god, was she like in debt to somebody? And, and she was like, maybe that night this person was coming to hurt them. And that's why she had the gun. <gasps> oh, this is crazy. So the princess walked alone without help until she was hopelessly lost in the big forest. Exhausted, she pressed on with no idea of where she was heading. As the hunter drew ever closer, dogged in his pursuit. She continued this way until she heard a heavy croaking far off to her left, so clear and loud that the princess immediately made for the source of the noise. A few minutes later, she reached the big frog in the small pond, and the frog looked at her with a gentle smile. Help me, please, said the princess. I need a place to rest and to hide. Ribbit, answered the frog, and the princess frowned. Please stop making noise. The mad hunter is after me. Ribbit, said the frog again, so loud the princess had to cover her ears. The creature began to jump every which way. What are you doing? asked the princess. Stop all that noise or he will find us. But the frog kept croaking and jumping around her, left and right, up and down, ribbit, ribbit, until the princess understood the meaning of all this fuss. Cautiously, the woman climbed on the back of the big animal, and then with a leap, the frog set off away from the pond. The frog jumped so high and so far that even the hunter could not find where the princess had gone. With a few jumps, the princess was out of his piercing eye. A few jumps more and she had vanished for good. The princess closed her eyes and let her clever mount carry her wherever the creature pleased. Less than an hour later, the big frog had reached the other side of the ancient forest, near the shores of the very deep lake. There she landed with a noise in front of a big wooden house that had been abandoned. Oh my god. Oh, now we need to read all of these. What the fuck was I talking about? We were just gonna skim. We're not skimming no more. Um, definitely the house that they're in right now. Thank you, said the princess, covering the animal's snout with kisses. I only wish you could speak so I would have understood that 
what you were trying to do sooner. As she pronounced those words, something incredible happened. The big frog was suddenly able to speak. Her first word startled the princess. The mad hunter is always at my heels. Now you're safe and I've had my revenge. You can stay in this house. It has been abandoned for a long time and no one will look for you here. And then without looking back, the big frog jumped back to the pond. And this is how the big frog saved the princess and how she earned the right to speak. Huh. Who the hell is the frog? Oh my god. So now we have the bear. I know that's one of them. And then we had the moose to look at. So let's see. Let's read this one. The bear and the princess. Once upon a time in the ancient and deep forest, the old bear stood on the bank of the river, swiping at salmon on their way to the spawning grounds. Just as he'd got on... Oh, blah. He got his paw on a particularly fat one. He heard a woman shouting for help. He considered simply eating his salmon, but then she screamed again. He lumbered over to investigate. After a short walk, he found the princess clinging to the top of a tree while a wolf snarled and snapped to the base of the tree. Old Bear would normally not get in the middle of such a situation. After all, as a fellow predator, he understood the wolves need to hunt. But when he saw the princess, he was struck by her beauty, and he knew he had to help. With a great roar, the bear heaved onto his hind legs, rising to his full height. The wolf snapped and snarled in his direction, but the bear roared again, and the wolf took off into the trees, tail between his legs. Interesting. That kind of feels like maybe she was being hit on and she didn't like it or something. The old bear fell back down onto all fours and stared up at the princess. She regarded him fearfully. You can come down, he said. How do I know? Oh, oh. How do, you, how do I know you didn't save me just so you could eat me yourself? Asked the princess. I suppose this is a fair question, admitted the old bear, but I promise I won't eat you. The princess had no reason to trust the old bear, except that he had kind eyes, and so she slowly made her way down the tree. When she reached the ground, the bear only watched her, and so she supposed she was not going to be eaten today. Thank you, she told the old bear. Of course, he said. Can I walk with you back to your home? Of course, said the princess. And so the princess and the old bear walked together through the forest back to the big wooden house. After that day, the princess would occasionally find gifts from the bear, a fresh caught salmon, a handful of ripe berries, a newly bloomed bluebell, Hmm. One spring, when a sudden thaw flooded the path out of the princess's home, the old bear was there, and she rode his back across the river. The old bear began to think that the princess should be his mate. After all, she had no mate, and she needed one, and he could keep her warm. Um, this is getting a little weird. And provide, uh, her a much more suitable den and catch fish. Who's that, Nat? Where am I? Uh-oh. I've lost my place. Um, uh, and catch fish for her and protect her from wolves. She in turn would brush out his fur and pick berries without smushing half of them and scratch that one part of his back he couldn't reach. And with how she took care of the goblins, she would be an excellent mother for his cubs. Is this Sam? One day, the old bear came with a ring of spruce and asked the princess to be his bride. I'm sorry, said the princess. You're a very good friend and I appreciate all you've done for me, but I cannot marry you. You are a bear. I'm a princess. It would never work. The old bear was crushed. Can we still be friends, he asked. We'll always be friends, said the princess, but I will never marry you. The old bear and the princess carried on their friendship, and after one year, he tried again to ask her to be his bride. But once again, she refused him. This happened one year later and one year after that, and then finally the princess said, Old bear, you are my dear friend, and I appreciate all you have done for me, but I would sooner you have left me to the wolves than marry you. And that is how it will always be. I have my hands full with the two goblins who live under my house, and they are all I need. That wounded the old bear deeply, but it was finally enough to stop his proposals. They remained friends, and he continued to give her gifts of fresh salmon and ripe berries and newly bloomed bluebells, but the old bear never again asked the princess to be his bride, much as he might have wanted to, and that is how the princess befriended the old bear and how she refused him. Well, that's, that's kind of sad. Um, holy shit. No, 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 we need to look up the moose. We have to read the moose. We can't just, like, guess, guys. We just can't. Um, where do we go to the index? Hope you guys like my reading voice, because you're going to have to get used to it. Um, the moose. I see is down here. Moose teaches the goblins. Princess party. Beaver. Dee -dee -da -ba -ba -ba. The bear's big paws. Oh, interesting. So there's even more. The big frog is punished. Whoa. Pelican, ice troll. Okay, let's read the moose. The moose teaches the goblins. This is probably Eddie. 
This is probably Eddie. Once upon a time, in a deep and ancient forest, the crafty goblins were hungry. This wasn't unusual, the goblins were always hungry, but today they were particularly hungry. They opened the wise princess's cupboards to look for a snack, but all she had was a small pile of nuts and berries and just one strip of dried fish. The goblins grabbed it all and gobbled it up, but they were still hungry. They went out into the woods to look for more to eat. First they dropped by the small pond. The big frog was asleep, and beside the pond was a pile of insects she had caught for eating after she woke up. The goblins crept up to the pile, careful not to wake the big frog. As they got close, she riveted loudly, and they froze. But the big frog kept sleeping, so they grabbed up the pile of insects and gobbled it up. But they were still hungry. Hmm. Did they... Oh, oh. As they crept back into the woods, they found the stalwart moose. Stalwart? Yeah. Watching them. Did you just steal the big fro frog's food? That's gotta be Tessa. The big frog's gotta be Tessa. The goblins tried not to look guilty, but failed. She said we could have them, they cried. Oh, really? asked the moose. Let's ask her. So moose woke up Big Frog and asked, Did you say the goblins could have your food? The Big Frog looked at the goblins, who she knew were always hungry, and nodded. Yes, I did. Really? asked the moose, surprised. Frog nodded, and the moose sighed. All right, then, he said, and he had to let the goblins go. Their next stop was a river. They watched as old bear swiped at a leaping salmon, catching it deftly in his large paws. He lay it out upon a rock and let it, or left it to dry. Lumbering into the woods to seek out some berries, the crafty goblins crept up to the rock carefully in case Old Bear returned. They reached the rocks, grabbed the salmon, and gobbled it all up, or gobbled it all up, but they were still hungry. Yeah, this is all kind of, it's making sense. Eddie's definitely the moose. As they crept back into the woods, the stalwart moose was once again waiting for them. Are you going to tell me Old Bear said you could have that? Yes, replied the goblins. Old Bear ampled up at that moment and Moose asked him, Did you leave that fish for the goblins? Old Bear looked at the goblins, who he knew were always hungry, and nodded. I did, he said. Really, asked the Moose. Really, said the Old Bear. After Moose left, Old Bear said to the goblins, Be sure to tell the princess I was kind to you. Oh, 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 wait, wait, we're Old Bear. Be sure to tell the princess I was kind to you, and don't steal my fish again. The goblins, still hungry, went out looking for more meal. Uh, they crept... <laughs> Be sure to tell the princess. Oh my god, that sounds like a desperate man. Uh, they crept up to the mangy muskrat's lodge and began to climb inside when they were dragged right back out. A stalwart moose dangled them by the seats of their pants and said, Now I know mangy muskrat didn't tell you that you could eat his food because he blames you for his coat being ruined. Besides, he barely has enough for himself and doesn't share with anyone. The goblins began to protest, but he took or shook his head. He set the goblins down and said, Come with me. The goblins followed the stalwart moose to a part of the river where he ran slow enough for them to walk into safely. Huh? He gave them... Oh, okay. He gave them each a fishing line and said, I'm going to teach you to fish so that, so that when you are hungry, you do not need to steal from the animals of the forest. It will be hard work, but it will be honest. The crafty goblins were not against working hard. They were just hungry, and so they listened to moose and soon pulled wiggling fish out of the river. They ate them up, and finally they were no longer hungry. And that is how the stalwart moose came to teach the crafty goblins to fish. Yeah, we know at least two of these. Oh my god, it was a fucking pelican. It was not the frog. Why the hell did I think it was the frog? Oh my god, we read that story for no reason. But at least we know the frog um, is definitely Tessa. I know, I feel like this is going to be mostly me reading. Where do we meet the pelican? Beaver, princess, two thieves, makes new friends. Moon, the pelican helps her friends. Is it all four? They're all four. The pelican helps her friends. Once upon a time in a deep and ancient forest, an early winter storm blanketed everything in snow. It was so early in the year that the creatures of the forest were not yet ready for an ordinary winter, much less a bad one. And everyone agreed the storm was a sign the Ice King had plans for a long, cold winter. The princess had grown up in a kingdom where it was sunny all year long, and the golems were very young, so no one in the big wooden house knew how to prepare for such a winter. The house was not well insulated, and they did not have enough fuel or food. Only the pious pelican noticed their plight, and when it came time to fly south with the other birds, her heart was heavy with sadness. What can I do, she thought. I'm a migratory bird, and I were, if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? The time came to go, and the pelican struggled to take flight. It felt as though a leaden weight were stuck right in the center of her chest. What can I do, she thought. I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? She managed to take off, but only just barely, flapping fiercely to catch up with the other birds. As a pious pelican began her journey, the storm picked up, battering her to and fro. She had fallen well behind the flock, and she was already growing tired. But for all her challenges, 
in the air. She could tell things were much worse on the ground. A deep freeze had settled over the forest. The leaden weight in her chest grew heavier as she thought of the princess and the goblins. What can I do, she thought. I'm a migratory bird, and if I were to stay, who would look after my flock? Hmm. The storm intensified, and the pelican was in a total whiteout. She knew she should have dis... Well, blah, blah. She should have despaired, but all she could feel was the weight, which had grown and grown until she thought she might drop out of the sky. She had felt called to help the princess and goblins, but she had ignored it. I should have stayed, she thought. It was the right thing to do, and now I'm lost. No way to make it right. Suddenly, she was plucked from the sky and deposited in the hall of the Ice King. Pelican, he said. You were flying in circles around my mountain. I was lost, she said, weighted down by the weight of guilt in my heart. The Ice King stared at her sagely. Is it guilt or is it something else? Open your beak. He reached down inside of her, pulling out a glowing stone. The pious pelican was surprised at how it filled her with warmth, chasing away cold in her doubt. You know what you must do, said the Ice King. The pious pelican flew straight to the big wooden house. Snow had already blown in through it many its many cracks, and ice crept across the floorboards. She found the princess and the goblins huddled in front of the quiet hearth, nearly frozen solid. No, she cried, and then she placed a stone in the princess's lap. The warmth of it spread through the whole of the house, melting all that had frozen. Oh. The princess threw her arms around the pelican's chest, and the goblins clung to her legs. Thank you, they cried. You're welcome, said the pelican, smiling in deep satisfaction. What is that? asked the princess, staring at her wonderful stone. At first, said the pelican, I thought it was my guilt, but when the Ice King pulled it out of me, I realized it was something much more powerful. Oh, it was probably love. Just then the storm broke and the skies cleared. The pelican filled the big wooden house's larder with wood, or with food from her beak, and then she took to the skies, lightened by the knowledge that through her charity, everyone in the big wooden house would be warm and fed until spring. And that is the story of how the pious pelican saved the wise princess and the crafty goblins from the long winter. I don't quite know who that is. Um, wow, we read a lot, didn't we? What am I trying to remember? Oh my god. Hello? The bear was the most helpful one. He was always around. Stalking her? What? No. I mean, I mean... he was kind of always there, lurking. He loved her, and but he also probably put a lot of unnecessary pressure on her. Yeah, okay. Well, I know who that is. Oh, 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 I see. Yeah, I think that's in the right placement. Um, I think that this needs to be swapped. <sighs> Poor Moose. Really didn't do him justice. Hmm. Justice? Kind of ironic, huh? Considering he was the lawful good one? Too yeah. bad the law isn't really just. Alright, let's swap you. You go here. So the pelican is actually... You done? Is that Tessa? I thought that the, pe uh, the frog was going... Who the hell was mm. the frog? Pelican. She was the most generous one. <laughs> yeah, but there was always a catch. Mm-hmm. Okay. So who was the frog then? Was the frog like... Yeah, who knows? I don't know why I read about the frog. Okay, 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 okay. We're good. This is it, it's confirmed. What do I do? All right, I think I'm done. You sure? Definitely, yes, positive. How do you like them apples? You know, I think you might be onto something. What about these guys? I don't see them being real life people, or this one. Oh, these over here? Oh God. Oof. I don't know who that is, but that is a very bad person. Or... The specific human attributes you have assigned to these forest animals are truly thought provoking. Indubitably. Or maybe like, the Mad Hunter is something within Marianne's self that she ran from. Like it could not be yep. like totally Marianne. A Why physical a princess, person, though? but it could be something. Why not a queen? In her. She hated authority. Yeah. She'd have been a terrible ruler. What am I supposed to be doing? Oh. You better hurry, or the mad hunter will catch us! We need to hide. This way. <gasps> What's going on 
I Oh I god. Know. Is he here? Is he really here? I'm scared. Go away! Yeah! Go back to the forest! Well that's uh pretty scary. I forgot about that. We'd been pretending he was there. And then, suddenly he was. That was the only time that happened, right? What? Allison. Wait. It felt way too real. It was... Us. Pushing our imagination way too far. Great. Hello? Sam Kansky, Grandmaster of Bad Timing. We're not done with this conversation. So Sam's a bear. Morning, Sam. Well, hi, goblins. I ran into Chief Brown, who said you were starting to clean up on the house this morning, so, uh... Yeah, okay. I kind of figured you... I thought Sam might was... need some supplies. ...the one we met on the couch. That's... And it felt like he did Thank love you. her. That was very thoughtful. The way he talked about her, so no, it makes sense. Uh, also got something for you, Tyler. What? A switchblade? Every man needs a good knife. Do they though? There you are. Thanks, Sam. Good. Good. Yeah. Why was Allison be like, where the fuck's my switchblade? Oh, Excuse me? Before I forget. He has good intentions. He just house. doesn't understand. Like He just doesn't understand. He's sticking to gender norms. It was your mom's favorite recipe. Lady of the house, I just, I just Still understood make it this. Darn now. near every week. Oh, Think of every time. Sam. Uh, thanks, but we don't have a stove. Still no electricity. Oh yeah, fuse box is busted. Can't we cook it on the fire? Just another thing I've been meaning to put back together around here. Where is it? I can take care of it. Oh, I don't doubt you can. But, uh, I've been kicking this thing back to life for the last 20-some years. I'll give you a hand. <laughs> All right. Box is in the barn. Follow me. Tyler's face is like... We'll be right behind mm -hmm. you. I can't believe... Oh, Sam. Oh, Sam. He gave her the food for the woman of the house. Bish, give me a switchblade! That's what I would have said. Oh, my God. Like, that's the shitty thing, is... Well, I guess old bears can learn new tricks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, he's Come definitely on. the bear. Let's go get our electricity back on. He's a good guy. Like, he's not a bad person. He doesn't have bad intentions. It's more just like he does... He's sticking to what he knows and what he's grown up with, which is, like, the gender norms. Um, it's more like you have to help those people understand instead of being aggressive with them because they just don't know you know what i'm saying like uh, i feel i don't feel like sam is a bad guy i don't so um how's school i graduated yeah, oh on outdoor studies oh outdoor studies huh well it's a good thing i came along when i did you know i built this here barn for your mama did you? You really helped Marianne. What's wrong with the fuse box? Okay, here. You really helped her out, huh? Let's give uh, him some know, peace of mind. A few chores here and there. As the hell is that sound? I was glad to help. Your mother, she. No. I can never bring myself to leave her high and dry. Anyways, let me find that darn key. Um, you still have our keys? What? Wait, you... wait, Sam, you have more of our keys? Yeah, the one for the barn's called a railroad key. See, it's got this special tip that you can... Fascinating. I'll take that off your hands now. Well, I, uh, figured I might still need to do some maintenance, so, uh... Nope, we're good. Thank you. Uh, fair warning, the door's a bit temperamental. <clears throat> Haven't you been taking care of this place? You didn't oil the doors? What? You think I just hang out here all day or something? 
Here, son, give me a try. Good. Okay, when you twist it as far as you can to the left, give it a nice little... Oh, my God. <clears throat> Jeez. Damn it. No, Did it break? Shit. Oh, yeah, it broke. Their movements feel very real. Like, that That felt very real. Well, that was at least cool. the door is open now. <laughs> yeah. This is awkward. Uh, that's easy to fix. What else is now, in here? Fuse box. Oh no, no, oh, no. Look. You and you are going to clean up your mess. I'll take care of the fuse box. But I didn't do it. I'm not asking. Go on. All right. Fuses go into plugs. Yeah. Oh. Oops, I didn't mean to um where am I? Hold on. Hold on here. Uh place a fuse, place a fuse. Let's look at this. Main range, water he heater, kitchen, outlet, and lights. One, two, three, four. What do we have? 30, 20, and 15? I don't understand what's going on here. What is this? Marianne, I wrapped up your electrical board. I gotta run, but in case you want to check it out, careful not to overload the circuits. You'll have to use 15 amp fuses for the garage. Amps total up to 120 amp for the whole house. 15 for the garage. Sam. P.S. Pretty proud of myself for once. I've respected the right color coding. Each fuse should have the right color cable. Pass me that handle. 15 yeah. is for the garage. Thank you. Oh. Um, and the garage yeah. was... Oh. Six. What happened? You what okay? is going on outside? Yeah. Just a bum knee. I oh, that's ball. wrong. Ball. Wait, it said for Football? the garage. In college? That's the I heater. That's damn why, pull back around. why is it in the opposite no, position, no. though? Well, I got hurt. Right. That doesn't seem... Oh, okay, 15 is in there. Oh! Oh. What doesn't really give any more information? Does it now? Do I have to use my brain? Is this, like, something I have to do? Fuck. Color coding? Well, if that's red, how do we know what red is? Problem must be the latch. No oh. Shit. It's covered in rust. Eh, nothing a little gotcha. salt Gotcha. Okay, fix. so. Salt and lime. It's Let's go ahead and line. do this then. A bottle of Twenty tequila. amp is yellow. <laughs> sure could go for a Listen. Right about now. I don't play games. Use my brain. Silly. Sometimes I, I do, but. Sometimes old Sam likes to feel I'm things. guessing red is probably the thirty. Let's try this one. Yeah, but what about here? This is probably 15. And this needs to be removed and replaced with 20. Done. Hmm? Seems good. There we goes. Look at her doing it. Oh no. I feel pretty you bad for fool. Sam. As well, you know? He loved Everything her. Okay? You uh oh. you two look like you got this all in hand, so um Luca, oh, this is a moment. He's squeaking his toy. What was that about? I don't know. I think he knows something more, though. I do think he's heartbroken, but that's a weird thing to to say. You I damn fool. I wonder why Sam got so upset. Oh, he probably forgot he was all out of bourbon. Oh. Something got to him. Well, something about it really got to him. I don't think any of us are exactly Be nice, happy Tyler. to see that gun right. Remind me to take it down later. What's this? Preta rep. What's that? Wolf pee. Ew, what? Do not spill it on your shoes. Why do we have wolf pee in here? I sense a story here. Well, yeah, what is going on? I sense a story. Well, if by <gasps> story you mean using it at 
fire weed to get rid of some rats. There's and some mad ha uh, hunter or whatever. Then yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was not funny. Sure thing, P boy. Hey there, little buddy. What? I don't hate spiders. <laughs> spiders are, you are cooing cool. at a spider? It had better be a tiny one. Don't listen to the mean lady. You're an eight legged beauty. What are we gonna do see with it. this wreck? Take it apart and sell the scrap. Um, all right, be my guest. I don't care what you do be with it. Be my guest. It sure looks like a pile of junk to me. Where you see junk, I see dollars. Oh man, I'm gonna put oh, together the sweetest this. toolbox ever. I think this is where she made all our toys. What's She's this? so crafty. And she can draw and write. And Toilet paper tubes, Oops. rope, cardboard. I don't know what she planned to make today. Maybe a car? Ooh, or a tank. A tank? I don't know about a tank. Wait, 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 wait. Huh, Toilet paper look rolls. at this. I think this is where she made all our toys. What she was planning to do with that, I don't know. Look at this board. Allison, do you know who this is? Who? What no. did you find? Do you know who that is? Uh, yeah. That's Carol, Eddie's mom. I've seen other pictures of her, but never this one. Man, look at Brown. And Marianne. She looks really happy. Can I? Careful, the glass is Ow. broken. Ooh. Are you okay? God, that scared me. It stings. Let's go see Mom. But she'll get mad. We weren't even supposed to be here. I can't stop playing this game. This game is like really, really interesting to me. Oh, follow it. Oh, come on, it's gonna get infected. Where, where are they going? To. She said not to disturb her and Eddie. Oh no. Oh no. Where are you going? Things were different when she was around. We were family, Eddie. How could you do this to me? Shh. Look. I had to make that call. What? What? What were they talking about? I don't know. I can't figure out what's going on. I don't know, but I remember that whatever Eddie had to do, whatever that call was about, it was tearing him up. Tearing him up? Maybe he had to put his total cop, mother in and a... And Marianne got pissed and threw him out. Here, I'm going to show you what I remember. There's more. I can feel it. Maybe, maybe he had to put his mom in a home? Let's see. I had to make that call. I was just following the law. Oh, yeah? And this little visit right here? What would the law say about this, huh? Look, I didn't have to come out here, but I did. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! Marianne. <sighs> I said get out! Out! What? What? She didn't throw the picture at him. You sure about that? He was being a complete dick. How can you be sure? We were eavesdropping. We could barely see a thing. What do you think happened then? I don't know. I... Remember. What's this? Look. I had to make that call. I was following procedure. What I'm legally required to do. Never mind. Then why are you here? Pretty sure this isn't procedure. I wanted you to hear it from me. Please leave. Mary Ann. I'm sorry. Please just go. What dropped? How do we keep remembering the same thing so differently? It was a long time ago, and, well, memory's a tricky thing. Wait, when did that happen? I, I'm not sure. I think it was 
the exact same day she attacked you. That's what I thought. But Whoa. Uncle Eddie said he hadn't seen Marianne for weeks. Yeah, that was bullshit. And what was all that about following the law? What was he doing here exactly? I don't know. He must have had reasons. Oh, I have no idea. I don't know. I have no idea. We shouldn't jump to any conclusions. Look, I know he took care of you. But that doesn't make him incapable of lying. No, I can't see him being that cold with Marianne. Even if he was being a cop. I mean, I can, but who knows? I guess memory's a tricky thing, huh? Yes, it is. Do we have another one? Choose Tyler's memory. Marianne was angry. You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! And hers. Get out. Get out. Oh my god. Uh, I mean... Tyler doesn't really like Eddie, and I don't know if... You're a goddamn hypocrite. Get out of here! The moose. Which... I'm like really having to think about this. I feel like... I feel like she wasn't angry. I feel like she was more sad. Cause she was sad that Get night out. as well. Let's go with Allison's this time. Get out. I know you were just doing your job, but I need you to go before you get in trouble. Please, just get out of here. Allison's sneezing. All right. Zay Brown really felt bad about whatever he came out to tell her. It was still the day she attacked us. Yes, it was. He still lied. Yes, he now did. What? We go and get a straight answer from him. Yes. Right now? Yes. I'll go get my car keys. But what will these mountains of trash do without us? Fuck the trash. <laughs> yeah, we definitely did not even go through that entire house. We were supposed to, we didn't. We didn't even make coffee. Oh my god. This game is so interesting. This is probably where my stopping point is gonna be, but we'll watch this. Really quickly. Man, I can't believe Brown lied. I mean, I may not be the guy's biggest fan, but he's always talking about the truth and the law and shit. Do you have to be so happy about it? What? I know you've been waiting for something like this. Something that proves Eddie's an asshole. No, no. But gloating about it is really not cool. Oh no, they're about to fight. Oh, it's Tina. I gotta take this. Yeah, j just a sec. I'm parking the car. That was a lie. Tina? Oh, I guess we are parking. What? Who is Tina? Guess I'll just go stretch my legs then. No. Just give me a sec. Tyler. Tyler does have a short fuse, just a little bit. Okay, Tina. What's going on? Hi, hon. I've got someone who is super interested in seeing the house. Oh, that's amazing. Uh, when? They're just in the area for a couple of days, so they'd like to come by day after tomorrow. Oh, uh, uh, I'm not sure it'll be ready. Hun, this guy is very motivated, but I know he's looking at other properties. And it's not like you've had people breaking down the door. He's very I motivated. That, but uh, we've kind of got a lot going on over here. Did I mention it would be a low cash offer? All right, fine. Do it. Yeah? Yep. Great. I'll set it all up and uh, send you the details. Later, hon. All right, guys, we're going to end right here. I really enjoy this game. I enjoy the draw to the mystery of it and how all of these people, it's almost like a puzzle fitting who was who in Marianne's life and figuring out 
why she did what she did and why she was in that state of mind. I have a bad feeling in my gut that it's going to be pretty traumatic. I've heard that this game does get heavy. Like, I, I know that it gets dark and heavy. I'm I'm really curious what's gonna happen. But yeah, hopefully you guys are still enjoying this. I'm gonna continue playing it, so it doesn't really matter. Make sure to check out the links in the description. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and thanks for watching, guys.